Now let us discuss about the lymphatic system today. Now this is the arteriole. Arteriole is a branch of artery. The arterioles divide into capillaries. They divide into capillaries. The oxygenated blood coming from the systemic arch enters into dorsal aorta, arteries, arterioles, and finally they come into the capillaries. Again, the capillaries combine together to form venules. The capillaries combine together to form a venule. Now, blood passes through arterioles, enters into capillaries, and that blood is collected by capillaries, enters into venules. Capillaries, venules, veins, vena cava, and back to heart. So, right. Now, the blood, when it is passing through the capillaries, you can see some substances are filtered outside. From the capillaries of the arterioles, some substances are filtered out. The filtration pressure, the filtration process is controlled by hydrostatic pressure of blood. Pressure of blood. So, because of the hydrostatic pressure, some substances are filtered here. It includes water, solutes, organic as well as inorganic substances, and some proteins which are having less molecular weight are filtered out. So, some, some fluids have come outside. Now, this is the tissue. So, the filtered fluid has come to lie in the space present between the tissues and this fluid is called as extracellular fluid. It is also called interstitial fluid. Now from this fluid nutrients are taken up by the, t the cells. Oxygen diffuses inside. Oxygen diffuses into the tissues. Now, in this fluid, into this fluid, the waste materials are released. Waste materials are released, and carbon dioxide also diffuses back. So, you can see diffusion of gases here. And from that extracellular fluid or interstitial fluid, you can see nutrients entering and waste coming outside. Much of this fluid again enters back into the venular end. Much of this extracellular fluid, I mean 85 percent or so of this extracellular fluid will re-enter into the venules because of blood colloidal osmotic pressure. Blood colloidal osmotic pressure. What does that mean? Now see when, when the blood is passing through the capillaries, only that substances which are having less molecular weight are filtered here. The larger proteins, albumin, globulin, the larger proteins cannot be filtered outside, they remain inside the blood. As such you can see the larger proteins are still present, they are present in the form of collides and they exert some pressure and that pressure is called blood colloidal osmotic pressure. So since proteins, more of proteins is present because of that osmotic pressure, some fluid, as much as 85 percent of the fluid will end up back into the venules. So a small quantity of the fluid, maybe a small quantity of the fluid is left behind there, it is not entering into venules. And this fluid is collected by a group of capillaries. Now this left out some around 15 percent of the fluid which is left behind. 
the interstitial fluid slowly enters into a group of capillaries and when this fluid enters into this capillaries you call the same interstitial fluid or extracellular fluid as lymph so the fluid which is present in this capillaries is called as lymph and these capillaries are called as lymph capillaries they are called as lymph capillaries now gradually these capillaries they combine together and form lymph vessels the lymph vessels gradually they combine with each other and finally result in the formation of lymph ducts so lymph capillaries lymph vessels lymph ducts the, these are part of lymphatic system the lymph duct will finally go back and if, and they enter back into the subclavian vein if you see the branches of the precaval vein the right atrium the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from one precaval vein and one postcaval vein one precaval one postcaval the precaval vein is formed by combination of it is formed by two branches this is precaval vein the precaval vein is formed by two branches two innominate veins you call them as innominate veins the left innominate vein and the right innominate vein now each innominate vein starts as subclavian vein from, from the left side it comes from the left foreleg it is joined by two blood vessels one is external jugular vein another is internal jugular vein subclavian comes from the left forelimb from the forelimbs external jugular comes from the external parts of the head internal jugular comes from the brain so all of them combine together to form a nominate vein In the right side also we have got the same branches now the lymphatic duct will finally come and join here the lymphatic duct it opens into the subclavian vein in the lower neck region and it is opening at the junction between internal jugular and subclavian vein so that means the lymph from the lymphatic duct is finally dumped into subclavian veins at the junction between internal jugular and subclavian it becomes part of innominate and becomes part of precaval and finally it will come back into the right atrium so we have got two lymphatic ducts a uh, one on the left side and another on the right side the left lymphatic duct and the right lymphatic duct now the left lymphatic duct we got two lymphatic ducts one on the left side the left lymphatic duct is bringing lymph from the lower parts of the body including abdomen and uh, lower limbs left part of the thorax left part of the neck left fore limb and left part of the head and this is the largest lymphatic vessel you can also call it as largest lymphatic vessel you can also call it as chyliferous duct it is also called thoracic duct all same the left lymphatic there is also the right lymphatic duct the right lymphatic duct is bringing lymph from the right part of the thorax 
a right forelimb, right part of the neck and right part of the head. So when compared to the right, the left one is little large. And in case of lymph vessels and lymph ducts, inside you will see valves. Like in case of veins, in case of lymphatic system also, valves are present. Walls facilitate unidirectional flow of lymph. And another thing is, inside the wall of this lymphatic system, you will find smooth muscles. Smooth muscles help in peristalsis, wave-like contraction which, which will push that lymph forward slowly. Because this fluid is moving under low pressure, so you can see uh, a presence of that smooth or involuntary muscles help in that peristaltic wave. Now the lymph capillaries on uh, one side, uh, the lymphatic system is regarded as the open circulate system because here from open sinuses the lymph is actually collected. And if you see the lymphatic, lymph capillaries, lymph capillaries are surrounded by single layer of endothelium with here and there pores are present. So gradually this, this inter interstitial fluid is retracted into that lymphatic system, into that lymphatic lymph capillaries gradually. And the lymph vessels and lymph ducts at periodic intervals, they are swollen, they form lymph nodes. At regular intervals, the lymph vessels and the lymph ducts, they are swollen. So they are swollen like that and the sw sw swollen region is called as lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are also called as lymph glands. And that is the area where you can see the lymphocytes are actively waiting. If you see the composition of lymph, I told you lymph is nothing but the leftover fluid which has been filtered outside from the capillaries. Now when heart has pumped out the blood, pumped the blood through the arteries, at the area of capillaries, you can see some fluid has been filtered outside because of hydrostatic pressure of blood. Now that fluid, much of that fluid again went back into the venules, a part of the fluid only is left behind inside the tissues. Now this interstitial fluid which is slowly entering into lymph capillaries, lymphatic vessels, lymph ducts and it is finally put back into the veins. So it is not a separate fluid, it is part of the fluid which has been coming outside from arteries but finally it has been put back into the veins. So, so that, that fluid is called as a lymph. If you see the composition of lymph. So that lymph, 95% of that lymph, 95% of lymph contains water. The remaining 5% includes various electrolytes, smaller proteins, some organic substances. antibodies, vitamins, enzymes, hormones and the cells include lymphocytes. If you observe the composition of that lymph, if you observe the cells, red blood cells are absent. White blood cells, in white blood cells again, abundantly present cells are only lymphocytes in, in, in the lymph. 99% of the cells inside the lymph are lymphocytes only. And 95% of its composition is water. The remaining substances, they are of very small quantity. Red blood cells are absolutely absent. Blood proteins are present in very less quantities. Nutrients and blood proteins are present in less quantity. We can find very small quantity proteins, certain antibodies, vitamins, enzymes, hormones, which are transported from one place to another place. So that's the composition of lymph. And 
if you see Kyle, Kyle is a combination of chylomicrons. Chylomicrons are nothing but triglycerides. Triglyceride is a combination of three fatty acid and one glycerol. After fats are digested inside the intestine, the fats are converted into fatty acids and glycerol. The short chain fatty acids, they enter into blood capillaries. But the long chain fatty acid and glycerol, they take the form of measles and then they enter into the epithelium of villus. And from the epithelium, in the epithelium they combine, both of them they combine. So you, they are called as triglycerides. Triglycerides is the combination of fatty acid, three fatty acids and one glycerol. Fatty acid, glycerol combined together to form triglycerides. Now triglycerides, it is coated by other proteins. It contains cholesterol, it contains fat soluble uh, vitamins. A combination of that, it is called as chylomicrons. You call them as chylomicrons. So chylomicrons, which includes triglycerides, it's, it's a, it is entering into lacteals. You see lacteals inside the villus. You can see at the center lacteals. Lacteal is a branch of lymph vessel. The fatty acid and glycerol first will enter into this epithelium, into this epithelial cells of villus. This, this is villus. The fatty acids and glycerol first will enter into epithelial cells in the form of measles, they enter. And from there, they enter into lacteals. Inside lacteals, they combine together and form triglycerides. They are now called chylomicrons. Chylomicrons will enter through lacteal and enter into lymph vessels. Through lymph vessels, again, they are put back into the beans. So, chylomicrons with triglycerides which enter the lacteal is called as chyle. Yeah? That's, how it, that's how it is actually absorbed back into the veins. And inside the lymph nodes, you can see B lymphocytes, T lymphocytes, B cells, T cells are waiting. So, this is the place where then microbes when they are coming, coming inside, which are microbes which are left behind here when they enter into the lymph vessels or lymph ducts. The lymph nodes, the B cells and T cells present there, they destroy the microbes. So that's the function of the B cells, T cells which are waiting inside the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are also called as lymph glands.